This is Pokemon Infinite Fusion the fan game with over 210,000 different Pokemon combinations. And we are here today to see if we can beat a hardcore Nuzlocke using only grass type fusions. That means if a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead. The level cap is the next leader's ace. No active items can be used in battle. And we're going to be playing on set mode. If you haven't already and you liked the video, please make sure you show your support down below by liking the video, leaving a comment, and subscribing if you haven't already. Over 50,000 people tune into my videos every month, and I am sitting at just around 10,000 subscribers. Do the math, everybody. Come on. Help me out, please. As always, when I do these monotype runs, we're going to be playing it on modern mode, which ups the difficulty, changes up the leader types, and overall makes the game much more difficult. We're also going to be starting with the base form of every non-legendary grass type that's in Pokemon Infinite Fusion. That way I get a wider pool of Pokemon to fuse with. But anywho, after kicking the ever-living crap out of Rando, let's go ahead and get a couple of new friends. Over on Route 1, we run into an Azuril as our first encounter. We also go ahead and grab our Pikimiku over in the Viridian City of Pokemon Art. On Route 2, we get ourselves a Bidoof. In Viridian Forest, we grab a Joltik. And over on 22, we grab a Teddy Ursa. And our Fuse. And our first fusion of the run is going to be Azuril fusing up with Shroomish. And the result is absolutely adorable. Shroomril is... Excellent. Next up, we're good. Next up, we're going to go ahead and fusing up Joltik with Ferro Seed, and we are going to get ourselves this adorable little Ferro Stick. After taking care of Rando, we go ahead and pick up our Rock Rough Egg, and then encounter Azura in the Secret Garden. For our final encounter over on Route 3, we grab a Bunnery. Finally, before facing off against Brock, our last fusion for now is going to be Rock Rough with Oddish, and Odd Rough is absolutely precious. Our first challenge is with Brock and his Steel type Pokemon. He starts off by sending in this regular Ordinary Duck, and I send in our Shroom Rail. Going for a Mega Dream, we do about 30%, as a Metal Claw comes in absolutely decimating us since we are a Fairy Pokemon. With the second one getting us down to just 3 HP before our Berry heals us up. Swapping into Ferris Stick, we can go ahead and just start spamming Absorbs until eventually the Duck goes down. When Steve Jr. comes in, I go ahead and set up a Paralysis and then I start stacking curses. Brock then uses his full heal, and I take the opportunity to stack up some more curses before paralyzing him again. But between Iron Barbs and Absorb, eventually we manage to take the Steve Jr. down, and we're moving on to Mount Moon. Outside of Mount Moon, we run into Nurse Joy, who's tending to this wounded Geodude. Brock rushes over to the scene, hoping to score some points with his lady friend. I've already patched up the Geodude with a little bit of mud and some seeds I found nearby, and Nurse Joy is so overjoyed and we go on a date together, leaving Brock all alone. We go ahead and grab our Magikarp. While fighting through Mount Moon, our Shroomrill's gonna go ahead and evolve into Shroomrill. And then one more time into Shroomrill. Who'd have guessed it? And in Mount Moon, we find ourselves a Geodude. At the back of Mount Moon, we run into Team Rocket is doing a bunch of evil stuff. Their machine explodes. I don't know even know what's going on. Nobody briefed me on this encounter and I'll never know because they left without telling me a damn thing about their plans. They did give me this rock. And then on Route 4, we find ourselves a Yanma. Picking that new Squirtle and combining it with our Bulbasaur, we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves Bulbasaur. Before facing off against Randall one more time, we are gonna fuse up our Lopunny with Badu, and honestly, Bupunny is, um, is adorable. I love the, I love her little legs. Also, before facing off against Brock, our Bapunny is going to go ahead and evolve into a Rose Bunny. Next up, our Bulbasaur fusion goes ahead and evolves a couple of times, finally becoming Ivy Turtle. We run into Rando over by Nugget Bridge flying a kite. He lets us know that he's forming up a new team that we're not allowed to join. One that does not appreciate the land. One that appreciates the things of the sky. He plans on calling it Team Air. The leader of Team Air then challenges us to a battle. When his Kotnix fails to get a Leech Seed off on us, it then goes for a Paralysis and then just starts spamming Mega Drain on us. But after we throw enough rocks at it, eventually it goes down. When Niniard comes in, we go ahead and swap out a Ferro Stick. After setting up a Paralysis and then training back and forth for a while, we're getting down a little low, so we go ahead and swap in a Rose Punny who takes some absolutely massive damage from a Leech Life. So we go ahead and swap in a Shroomeril, and thankfully our Power Flinch game is strong, and we take down the bug. Next out is Solavi, and after a handful of headbusts, because we don't have any hands, we take him down pretty easily, but we're getting super low now. 
When his Phoebus comes in, it hits us down to just one HP. The disrespect of this fish. We find ourselves a stun reap over on 24. Before facing off against Missy, our odd rough is gonna go ahead and evolve into a glue rough. Our second gym challenge is against Misty and her ice Pokemon. She starts off by sending in this bunny and we send an Ivy Turtle. After getting faked out and quick attacked, we go ahead and drop a bunch of rocks on it doing some decent damage as she then goes ahead and pivots into Manras. After continuing to drop some rocks on it, it throws some ice at us before healing back up with a super potion. However, ultimately the power of rocks take it down and we're left with just six HP. When the bunny comes back in, we go and swap into Glue Rough. And after one more Rock Tomb, we take care of business, securing our Cascade Badge. Over on Route 5, we run into a Ralt. Then we grab our Togepi Egg from the daycare. On 6, we grab a Ladyba. In Diglett's Cave, we find, you guessed it. On 11, we find a Pichu. And a Claw Fossil on the SSN. While fighting our way through the SSA, and our Glue Rock's gonna go ahead and evolve one more time, and I absolutely love Glue Rock. Next up is gonna be Shrewrill, who also evolves, and the beard on Brio is amazing. On the SSA, we go ahead and run into Rando, who's wearing a really cool bomber jacket, but he took just a giant A and stapled it on there, and it kind of ruins the look for us. He says he's trying to find Team Air administrators, and we can try out, only if we beat him in a Pokemon battle. But if I beat him, shouldn't I be the leader? His new leave off Cotnuxio comes in, but Pharaoh Stick can go ahead and with a couple of bug bites, taking it down quickly enough. When Ninyard comes in, it goes for a leech life, doing absolutely devastating damage to us. So after we heal up with our berry, we need to swap out badly. Setting in our Breeril, a Rock Tomb comes in, lowering our already crappy speed. And after we set up a leech seed and then go for a mock punch, we get it down just below 50%. And after Rando heals up, two more mock punches take the bad boy down. When his slug bass comes in next, one Aqua Tail finishes it off, which is going to lead into his Sola V. We then swap into our Ivy Turtle as a hidden power slams us down to 22, activating our berry. And after the Leech Seed and a few bites, we manage to take it down by the absolute skin of our teeth. Before facing up against Surge, we're going to go ahead and fuse up the Ralts we found with Chikorita, and I love Chikots. Our little Leaf Gal is then going to go ahead and evolve a few times, first into Bates, and then one more time into the absolutely adorable Balia. With our team set up, it's time for us to take on Lieutenant Surge and his fighting Pokemon. He starts off by sending in this Nose Key, and we send in our Petal. After going for a couple of Calm Mines and both of us getting paralyzed, we go for a Razor Leaf breaking down to his Sturdy. After Lieutenant Surge heals up, we take it down on the following turn. Coughloom's out next, going for a Mach Punch, doing basically nothing, but we are paralyzed. After clearing the smog and also clearing a bunch of our HP bar, a Draining Kiss does about 50%. But scared of another Poison move, we go ahead and swap out into Frog, as a Bullet Seed comes in, doing a decent amount of damage to us. After going for another Flurry of Seeds, our Barry heals us back up, and we go for a Water Pulse, grabbing the KO. When his ace Houndlade comes in, we're going to go ahead and swap out and send in our Beard Bunny. And after taking a couple hits, a Play Rough gets him in one shot, and we defeat Lieutenant Surge. Over on Route 9, we grab ourselves a Clef Key. On Route 10, we grab Magnemite. Power Plant gets us a Voltorb. In Rock Tunnel, we grab an Arnix. We also grab our Hone Edge and our Noibat Egg. A Growlithe on Route 9, a Snubdew over on 7. Then we go ahead and grab our Eevee from Saladon City. A Slugmon, 16. And then finally, a Scyther over in the game corner. We're going to fuse up Leafeon with Growlithe, and look how absolutely adorable Growlfeon is. Next up, Growlfeon's going to go ahead and evolve after getting a Firestone, and Arcafeon is absolutely precious. Next up to evolve is our Frog, as it's going to go ahead and have its Venusaur half evolve into Venatortal. And fighting our way through the Rocket Baits, Frog's going to go ahead and evolve just one more time into its final Venastoise form. But we're not done yet. Petal's going to go ahead and start evolving as well into its next form, Bavoir. And then after leveling up just one more time, Petal gets to evolve once again into Megavoir. Pete gets to evolve into its final form as well. 
and I love Vile Rock. What a cool sprite. Using a Blue Leap and Aaron, before we face off against Giovanni, we're gonna get ourselves this adorable little Art Leap. Art Leap's then gonna go ahead and evolve into its next form, Lair Leap. We're also gonna go ahead and fuse up Geodude with Tangela, and the result is gonna be Tandude. Welcome back to the team, buddy. Tandude is then gonna go ahead and evolve as we're fighting our way to the rocket base into Tandler. After that insanely long team montage, we go ahead and run into Giovanni at the back of the team rocket base. I'm still not 100% sure what they're up to, but it clearly isn't good because Erica looks incredibly uncomfortable. And the battle begins. This smoking bird goes up against our vine rock, and a drill pack does some good damage to us. And when he follows up with a sludge bomb, it gets us way down before our berry heals us back up, but we manage to put him to sleep. Now I go back and forth with this thing for an insanely long time, putting it to sleep, using Mega Drains, and then just repeating until Tandler is in serious danger of going down. So I go ahead and swap into Lair Leap, where I essentially just keep on doing the same thing over and over again, but this time swapping between Draining and Rock Slides until we finally take down this monster. Hodgzing is an absolute insane obstacle to overcome with my grass team. When Kekton comes in, I get knocked down way into the red and down to just six HP before I decide to go ahead and swap out, sending an Iber Bunny. After our rock slide does nearly 50% to us, I grab a crit hit with an Aqua Tail and get the KO. This is gonna lead into the Smear Guard and another Aqua Tail brings him down pretty low, activating his berry before he goes for a Destiny Bond. Knowing I can't go for the knockout on this turn, I go ahead and set up a Leech Seed as he fails to get a Spore because I'm Grass-type, you silly goose. And another Aqua Tail takes it out. When Disdain comes in, I go for a Play Rough, getting it way down into the red as he returns fire with a Play Rough, getting us down to just 3 HP. But with a Mach Punch, we end the battle, defeating Giovanni. With Team Rocket taking care of us, now it's time for us to take on Erica and her Bug Pokemon. She starts off with Galvanape, and I send in Bingo. Galvanape, you turns out, sending in Roaster as we set up a Swords Dance. On the following turn, we go for a Fire Fang, taking it down in one shot. When Galvanape comes back in, it goes for a Rock Slide, taking us down to about 50%, before it U-turns out again into Volcanics. When it goes for a Quiver Dance, we manage to connect a Fire Fang, taking it out. And with nowhere left to run, a Fire Fang takes out our final bug, and we defeat Erica. In Pokemon Mansion, we find a Shuppet. Over on Route 12, we go ahead and play our flute for this sleeping bear. On Route 12, we find a Fletchinder. On 13, a Girafferig. On 14, a Slackoth. And on 15, a Corsola. Then circling back around, over on 18, we find ourselves a Doe Tank. And then we grab a Zubat on the cycling road. Finally, in the Safari Zone, we grab ourselves a Pinsir. Then before facing off against Koga, our Flytrap is going to go ahead and evolve into Lairdily. And then one final time into its final form with Ajli. Next up is going to be Koga and his Dart Pokemon. He starts off by sending in this Wirion, but we both know that it's a dirty Zoric trick. Going for a crunch, we do about a third, breaking the illusion as a Dark Pulse comes in, slamming us down below half. Following up with another crunch, we take it down way into the red on a crit as another Dark Pulse brings us down to just 35 before Koga heals up. Taking the opportunity to do our own heal, we go ahead and start spamming Moonlight to get ourselves into a decent position as Koga goes ahead and uses this second potion. And after a few more turns and a few more crunches, we take it down. Abtop is out next, and afraid of a sucker punch, I go ahead and swap, sending in my Beard Bunny as it goes ahead and slams us down with a close combat. But surprisingly, one Mach Punch is all it takes to take out this little doggo. Next up is the real Weirion, which I'm surprised that he is sending this out before a Hunchfire. But we swap in a Flytrap, going for a Confuse Ray. We try to keep it confused while we continue to spam Ancient Powers looking for that boost. And we're just gonna skip ahead here because honestly, I just kept on confusing this thing and training it until it very, 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 very slowly goes down, nearing the red as we swap into Petal. And after one draining kiss and it's smacking itself in its face, we take it out. After connecting with a couple of hits on us, it only takes two smooches to take down this bird and secure our soul badge. 
and then we grab our Lapras over at Silphco. After saving everybody in Silphco, we run into Rando yet again, and he's attached these weird wings to his bomber jacket, and now he's wearing yellow goggles. Does he just think he's Hawks? Is Hawks part of Team Air? Is Team Air a real thing? Rando says that the injustices that have been laid upon the air from the land must be stopped, and Team Rocket is the first step in destroying everything the land represents. And while I don't agree with most of what he just said, I do agree we need to stop Giovanni. But only after we have a Pokemon battle of our own. Of course, because Pokemon. When Niniyard comes in, we swap out into Bingo as we take an Iron Head. After he goes for a Swords Dance and an x Scissor doing some pretty decent damage to us, we manage to take it out. With Fraxel gone in, it takes the player up pretty well, getting down into the red as it goes for a couple of Dragon Dances. It then goes for a Zen Headbutt, getting us down pretty low, activating our Berry, but we manage to take it down in the following turn. When Raporeon comes in, we swap out setting in our Flytrap, taking a Psychic. Going for a Toxic and a Confuse Ray, we start setting up to put ourselves in a position to just start sucking things up with Giga Drain. And eventually, it does go down. When Magtick comes in, we swap out into Frog, taking a Lava Plume. And after we trade Surf's back and forth, we come out on top. And finally, with Whimsor right back in, it tries to full switch out, but there's nowhere for it to run as our Ice Beam comes in, slamming it down, defeating Rando. Rando then says that we are worthy of joining Team Air, and he gives us a propeller hat. I confidently put it on, and we storm into the Silk President's office, challenging Giovanni to a double battle. And if we win, he's gotta leave. I still don't know what they're doing, but I still know it's probably not good. Giovanni starts off by sending in a sword as well as a bird, and Whimsoray sets up a tailwind in true Team Air fashion. And then it dies. While I manage to get H Magius down pretty low, Lamsil also goes down pretty quickly. And on the following turn, we take down the Sword Boy. Magtech then forgets who's on his team and just starts spamming Surf, which is not super cool, so we go ahead and swap out into Flytrap. Eventually, Giovanni heals up, and Magtech goes down. With Fraxel gone in, I just start setting up poisons on both of his po- When Fraxel gone comes in, I go and set up a Toxic on Kekdon. And Rando's Pokemon goes down quickly enough, leading into Niniard. Niniard tries to set up a Swords Dance, but after it gets hazed away and we all get slammed with rocks, it goes down fairly quickly. Once Kekkon does, once Kekkon does, once Kekkon gets down pretty low, he swaps out, setting in Donzor. And Raporeon does some okay damage all around. A Hyper Voice slams Haunting down pretty low, but then my Fly Drop and Raporeon both get slammed down super low as well. However, on the following turn, Haunting finally goes down. When Donzor takes down the Espeon, it's down to just us versus two Pokemon. As Fly Trap gets taken out with a Rock Slide. sending in Frog, we get flinched a whole bunch, which is super, super scary, but we finally managed to take the Kekkon down and swap out into Bingo before it's too late. Who then manages to take down the Donzor, and we defeat Giovanni and Team Rocket. We go ahead and grab a Cyndaquil. Before facing off against Sabrina, we go ahead and fuse up Scizor with a Victory Bell, and the result, honestly... <laughs> I'm really into Victory Zor. Next up is going to be Sabrina and her fairy Pokemon. She starts off by sending in Togetails, and I send in Pete. Going for an Accelerock, we do about 50%, and on the following turn, take it down, while we take a decent amount of damage from a Flamethrower. Silvar's up next, and I heal back up with a Moonlight, while taking about 50% with a Psychic. After realizing I'm not really in a spot to keep on healing up, we go ahead and throw a bunch of rocks at this thing, taking it out. Once Merikyu comes in, I swap out into Victory Zor, taking a play rough. Then on the following turn, it goes for an Earthquake, KOing my newest and like coolest team member. When Beard Bunny comes in, I knock it way down into the red with an Aqua Tail, and after taking an Earthquake, Sabrina heals up. 
and after she heals, it only takes us two hits to take it out. Clefix comes in last, so we swap into Bingo trying to set up a Will-O-Wisp. Once we manage to connect, we just go back and forth between Fire Fangs and healing, and eventually, we take down Clefix and defeat Sabrina. In Palatown, we drop by to go ahead and grab our Charmander egg from our sister. In Pokemon Mansion, we grab a Pawn Q. Then turning in our fossils, we're gonna go ahead and grab a Kabuto, Aerodactyl, and Tyrant. Finally, we'll also grab our Absol. Before facing off against Blaine, Overgrowth is also gonna evolve a couple of times. First into Tanlam, and then one more time into his final form, Tanlam. In modern mode, Blaine becomes a psychic trainer and it's time for us to take him on and this absolutely horrifying ball pit. Overgrowth goes for an ancient power and actually manages to get the Omni Boost before going for an Earthquake, grabbing the KO. Zykin's in next, going for a Flare Blitz, getting us down to our berry as we heal back up and then go for an Earthquake, grabbing the KO. Octator is up next, and a Giga Drain gets it down to its Focus Sash. And after Blaine heals up, the following turn lets us take it down. His final Pokemon, Galchomp, comes in, and after two more Giga Drains, we secure our Volcano Badge. We catch up with Team Rocket yet again over on Mount Ember. Well, we find out what they've been up to this entire time. They've been developing Triple Fusion technology. Who knew? And it turns out the reason that they took over Silphco was to get Master Balls. And now that they've captured all three Kanto legendary birds, they plan on using Zap Mokuno to rule the land, the air, and the sea. As the assistant captain to Team Air, we must do something about this. I spin the little propeller on my hat and I launch into battle against Zap Mokuno. We start off by sending Pete going for a rock slide, but unfortunately all three of them have charty berries, taking a lot less damage than I would like, and then Pete immediately goes down to an ice beam. This is when I decide to spring for my contingency plan, sending an overgrowth and trying to go for an explosion. However, I am too slow. Sending in Bingo, I managed to take down Articuno, but ultimately my doggo goes down as well. Once Frog can come in, I start going for Surce. And after getting slammed around a lot, we managed to also take down Moltres, leaving Zapdos really low before he goes down as well. Finally, we can send in Beard Bunny, going for a play rough for one of the sloppiest Zap Makuno fights that I've had in a while. And it's going to set the tone for the end game of this run. All right, let's go ahead and clean up by grabbing the birds. So first is Moltres. Then we're gonna go ahead and ground Zapdos. Before facing off against Giovanni for our final badge, we go ahead and fuse a Tarantrum with Torterra. And Torterum is awesome. Next up, Prickle's gonna start evolving too, eventually turning into its final form with Ferratula. Then giving a shiny stone to fan service, she can go ahead and also evolve into her final form with Rose Bunny. Catching back up with Giovanni one more time, over in Viridian City, we need to take him on for our eighth and final badge. We send in fan service against his disdain, and my plan here is to just have him waste all of his full restores on this first Pokemon. And after he uses a bunch of them, he swaps out into his Snorking. After going for a jump kick, we get Snorking down pretty low, but after a Mega Horn, fan service goes down. But at least we got the poison off, I guess. Sitting in Beer Bunny, we go for a Seed Bomb, taking the big guy down. Coffee King's out next, and it goes for a Retaliate, immediately taking down one of our first Pokemon of the run. Setting in Yoshi, it goes for a Play Rough, who gets down just below half after we heal up with our Berry, as a Crunch does an insane amount of damage, getting him down into the red. Giovanni then withdraws, sending Disdain back in, and we take out our Dinosaur, sending in Petal. But after a Draining Kiss, we manage to take it out. Coffee King comes back in, going for another Retaliate, taking down Petal as well. Sending out Prickle, a hammer on gets us down super low, but thankfully for Iron Bars, we can finally take down this monster. When Mapom comes in, a double hit gets us down to just 39 HP before we get healed up. And after a Power Whip, we manage to get it down way into the red, but ultimately, we take each other down when he goes for another double hit. 
Yoshi comes in against Tyrannacy, and she gets knocked down to just 21 HP, but does manage to come out on top, defeating Giovanni, and we get to move on to the Pokemon League. Well, what are the odds? We grab a Fraxel gun over in Victory Road. And then our Entei. With our team absolutely devastated, we need to start fusing up. First, we're gonna do Whimsicott and Togekiss, and I know I've used Togekiss before, but it is absolutely adorable. Next up is gonna be Sceptile and Steelix, and I absolutely love this take on Mega Sceptile. 10 out of 10. Next up is gonna be Cacturn and Salamence, and the results, I love that jawline. I love that hat. This dude, cool as hell. Next up is gonna be Trevenant with Swampert, and the result is absolutely awesome. I am so into these living trees. And then as our final team member, fusing up Executor with Typhlosion, gets us this goofy little goon. Alrighty then, let's get ready to face off against the Elite Four. But before we do, let's take one look at our team. First up, we have Yoshi with Earthquake, Rock Slide, Dragon Claw, and Crunch. Next up, we have Dandelion with Leech Seed, Toxic, Draining Kiss, and Air Slash. Moss with Night Slash, Leaf Blade, Earthquake, and Sword Stance. Tin Man with Zen Headbutt, Crunch, Thunder Fang, and Dragon Dance. Elderwood with Earthquake, Phantom Force, Horn Leech, and Will O Wisp. And finally, Cuckoo Nut with Leaf Storm, Psychic, Flamethrower, and Eruption. First up for us is gonna be Lorelei and her water Pokemon. We start off by sending an Elderwood against Polion. After going for a Horn Leech followed by an Earthquake, we managed to take the King down. Garakuse out next, going for a Play Rough, bringing us down to about half. When it follows up with an Aqua Tail on the following turn, knocking us down super low, we go for a Horn Leech, getting the Yoko. Scartops is in next. And after going for a Waterfall, it manages to flinch us. And after using an Iron Head, we're down to just 52 HP. And a Horn Leech brings it down to about half. And lucky for us, our Harvest comes in clutch as we heal back up a bit again. And we continue to get lucky with those Harvests, and then eventually we bring the Scar Tops down. When King Star comes in, we grab the Yoko with a Horn Leech, which is gonna lead into her Buka Tomb, which is a giant pain in the neck, so we go ahead and use Will O Wisp. Knowing we can't afford to Oko this thing, I go and swap in the Dandelion, setting up a Toxic. Now we just start smooching this thing until it gradually goes down, and she sends in her Ace Me Latina. After setting up a Toxic, after, after setting up a Toxic and a couple of Draining Kisses, we managed to take Lorelei down. Next up in the Elite Four is going to be Bruno and his Rock Pokemon. He starts off with Tyranflame, and I send in Elderwood again. We take a couple of Rock Slides, no problem, and two Horn Leeches is all it takes to take the bird down. Armazor's in now, going for a superpower doing about 30% to us as an Earthquake grabs us the Yoko. When his Maraperia comes in, I'm feeling pretty good about myself until it goes for a Mega Horn. And it gets the Yoko on our big scary tree. Setting in Moss, we can follow up with a Leaf Blade, grabbing the Yoko ourselves. Which then leads into his Ace, Aerodon. Swapping into Yoshi, because I think he's the only thing that I have that can actually resist fire. An eruption does about 25% to us. It then goes for an Earthquake, bringing us down to about half, as an Earthquake of our own brings it down into the red. After Bruno uses both of his full restores, we can then safely take the Aerodon down after a few more Earthquakes. When Krilluff comes in, we go and swap into Dandelion. And then after setting up a Toxic and getting stuck in an Encore, we eventually switch over to Draining Kisses until ultimately it goes down. King Gron comes in as his final Pokemon, and knowing I can't afford a Metal Burst on this thing, I stack up three Swords Dances with Moss before going for an Earthquake, only for it to have Sturdy, you silly son of a goon, but lucky for me it doesn't use Metal Burst, and we take the King Gron down, defeating Bruno. Our next challenge is going to be Agatha and her poison type team. She starts off with Clinkfish, and we start off with Cuckoo Nut. Normally against Agatha, I like to set up a sweep since Clinkfish doesn't have any directly attacking moves. All it has are Spikes and then Destiny Bond, but I don't have that luxury really, since I'm super weak to her entire team. 
With Cuckoo Nut, a couple of psychics take the fish down. When Quadrigan comes in, I swap out into Moss, and she U turns out, sending in Haunch Sing. Warrior Flamethrower promptly puts me in my place, KOing Moss. Sending in Yoshi, I go for a Dragon Claw as a Slud Bomb comes down, slamming me down below half before my berry heals me back up. But after another one, we take it out, leading back into Crotrigon. Or excuse you this outrage bringing me down to 3 HP. We then swap in the Dandelion so we can end the outrage early, and an Air Slash KOs the big guy. This then leads into mu -oh, so we go and swap into Cuckoo Nut, taking a Sacred Flyer. And returning fire with a flamethrower of our own mansion to get the burn off. With Sacred Fire powered down, it only takes us another hit to take it out. With Clefairy in, I go for a flamethrower, bringing it way down into the red, but then a sludge bomb comes in, absolutely destroying Cuckoo Nut. Sending Dandelion back in, I go for an air slash, KO in the Clef. When her final Pokemon Arnix comes in, and I'm pretty sure. Agatha almost always uses this as her final Pokemon, which I actually find kind of funny. We take care of it quickly enough, and we're moving on to Lance. As I approach Lance, he tells me that he's the master of the skies, and of all flying Pokemon, they're his domain. And then I notice that he's wearing a propeller hat, very similar to mine. Oh god, did Rando beat him before I got here? He starts off with Toga Flame, going for a Moonblast on my Yoshi, bringing me down well below half. And after we fail to get the Oko with a Rock Slide, I swap in the Dandelion. When Lance heals up, I set up the Toxic, and then I just start going for Air Slashes until we take the bird down. Pokachi gets in next, and I know this thing is part bug, so we start spamming Air Slashes and Smoochie Kisses until we take it down. Which leads into his Septodactyl, who's also super weak to my Air Slashes. When Dark Knight comes in, I go for a Draining Kiss, healing myself back up as a Fire Blast comes in, knocking me pretty low. But fortunately, I'm faster, and we get the KO. With Snorkor in, its Toxic Orb starts doing its thing as he gets Poison Heal, and he just keeps on spamming Facade. This is the first time I have ever fought this thing, and it has had the opportunity to do anything to me. But after we swap into Tin Man, we do manage to take it out fairly easily, considering. When Agent Menace comes in as his final Pokemon, it goes for an Outrage, slamming Tin Man down to just 47 HP. And after a Thunder Fang brings him down a little bit below half, this stupid thing's Rocky Helmet gets me down to just 8, and I panic and swap into Dandelion, ending the Outrage early. However, it's not Dragon, you silly goose. It's flying. So when a Draining Kiss fails to get the KO, an Iron Head from the Age of Menace certainly doesn't fail. And once I send in Yoshi, I can finish off Lance's final Pokemon with a Rock Slide, and we are moving on to the champion battle with only two Pokemon. I approach Rando, and I rev up my propeller, and I tell him that I will be the ruler of the skies, despite the fact that my team is all grass Pokemon. Don't think about it too hard. I never think about any of these things too hard. He starts off with Ninsharp, and I send in my Tin Man. After setting up a couple of Dragon Dances, then Ninsharp sets up a couple of Sword Dances, and Iron Head slams me down well below half. After going for a Fly and hitting him down to his Focus Sash, I go for another Fly, taking it down on the following turn. When Chandelvile comes in, I go for a Crunch, but its Culberberry keeps it alive just barely as Rando heals up again. And fortunately, we managed to take it out with a crunch on the following turn. Next up is Luxius, and I make the fatal error of swapping into Yoshi and forsaking all of my bonuses. As Luxius goes for an extreme speed, doing 50% to me on the first hit. And after I fail to get the KO with an earthquake, Rando heals up another two times before her retaliate takes me down. And while I manage to take down Luxius, and Torter Neon. When Hax Menace comes in, I'm set back to my, I'm set, but when Hax Menace comes back in and I fail to get the KO, it just goes for a single outrage. I will be back, Air Captain Random, and I will have my vengeance. If you liked the video, make sure you leave a comment down below, like it, and sub if you haven't already. I really appreciate the support that I've gotten over the last year 
and I hope that I can make even more content and even better videos this year.